Today we're going to go ahead and learn about red eye reduction and something else that you probably already know or should know. Uh, we're going to be using levels to do some color correcting. And I believe we went over that, but just in case, we're going to go over it again. And this is going to fix this picture. So first thing on red eye reduction, we're going to go over here to the left hand side. And I already have my red eye up, but for you guys it's probably not going to show. If you're going to go ahead and look somewhere where the eyedropper is, um, right underneath that you're going to have your crop tool, your eye drop, and then you have your red eye reduction. But you're probably going to see a band-aid which is spot healing. You go ahead and just, again, just click on it and hold it down for a second or two. And that will bring out your fly out window or you can just go ahead and right click. And right clicking should do that as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it down for a second. Get my red eye reduction tool. There we go. And zoom back out. Red eye is very simple, very straightforward. Um, some people don't quite understand what the options do, and the options are really simple as well. A lot, a lot easier than um, some of the other options that we have in our other tools. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to see exactly where the red eye is going to be, and the red eye is in the pupil. And I did talk about what the red eye is, and if you didn't hear me before, red eye reduction is essentially whenever you're shooting somebody straight on, um, you never want to flash them out. I'm straight on. So this happens when a flash is on camera shooting straight through. Somebody's looking directly at the camera and the issue is is we're actually taking a picture of all the blood and the rods and the cones and everything in the back of the eye and so that's reflecting back to us. And so we're essentially seeing blood here. We're seeing the inside of the eye because if you don't know this the pupil is really it's not just a black circle it's actually a hole in your eye and that's what you see. The iris here, this is just the muscles that contract the eye or contract the pupil. Just like the iris in your camera or the aperture in your camera, um, the iris here, this controls um, how big or how small the pupil is. And so that controls how much or how, how much light can enter your, um, your eye. If you walk outside the bright sun, guess what's going to happen? Uh, your iris is going to contract. It's going to go ahead and it's going to close that down so not as much eye, um, light enters your eye, just like a camera. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting rid of this red eye. Um, it's actually really easy to do. Um, all you really have to do is, let me zoom in here, all you really have to do is you just go ahead and we're going to draw a square. Notice how I have it not just around the pupil but I also have it around the eye itself. Uh, Photoshop has to analyze all of that, decide what exactly needs to be done, and when I let go, it's pretty much done. Up here in your amounts, um, pupil size just leave alone. Um, that actually, I've never found that adjusting that has ever made a difference. Uh, darken amount can make a difference. If you notice here, there is some shading on one side, and there's a little bit of light in here. Um, right when you hit the uh, the catch light. And this is called the catch light here. Um, so what's going to happen is if I set my darken amount too high and I do that, it's pretty much going to make all of this black and it's not going to leave any room for shading, um, which is going to look pretty unnatural. You want it to be fairly low, but the problem is if you go too low, you're going to have too much red starting to leak into your eye. And so I usually do somewhere around 20, 25, something like that. And there we go. And so you notice that you have, it's really subtle, but you do have a little more shading here than you do on this side. And that can make it look a little more natural. So I think this is pretty successful. And you guys, that's pretty much it. You can kind of see the difference between the two here. It's pretty much it for red eye reduction. We're done. Um, there are a few other issues in this photo that we're going to go ahead and take care of. And these are things that I want you guys to go ahead and take care of as well. First thing is color. Um, over time, or even when you take a picture, or there's old pictures that you may have, um, the colors may degrade. And so you're going to have a lot of, uh, some of the inks will, um, will uh, go away over time faster than others. So you're going to see here that there's a lot of red inks that are left. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to try our best to restore that and bring it back. Now there's two ways we can do that. Um, first way, we can either use the non-destructive method, which is using our levels adjustment here. And knowing that I can adjust my levels here, 
um, you notice that it is a floating window. Uh, it's a floating layer above my above my photo. So any adjustment that I make, anytime that I may mess up on it, I know that I can either just turn it off or on, or I can actually click on it, hit the garbage can down here, and make it go away. Actually, I just delete the mask. Let's delete the whole thing. There we go. That's a non-destructive method that works perfectly. Um, sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I'm going to use the destructive method. And this is the way that Photoshop um, used to be before we had uh, our image adjustments and our non-destructive methods. We can go to image adjustments and we can do a levels adjustment here. The reason why I want you guys to know this is because Photoshop or sorry, the ACA in Photoshop may actually ask you one of the two. It may ask you to do the non-destructive way. It may ask you to do the traditional way. Um, you do have to know both though. So just for this sake, I'm going to go ahead and do it here. So we go to image adjustments and levels, but it's going to be exactly the same thing. Um, your levels are going to show up. So if you remember, what are levels? Levels are just a graph. So what we have here is we have a graph that goes from zero to the left, 255 to the right, and there's essentially 256 colors here. And there's 256 shades of gray. Zero is considered a color, so that would be the 250, that's why 256. Um, 255 would be pure white, zero would be pure black, and then um, 1.0 is gonna be exact gray in between. And so what we're gonna do now is um, we're gonna take a look at this graph, and this graph doesn't look too bad. So this is, um, what the levels look like for a gray scale. So our black levels look good, our white levels look good, our mid gray levels look good. But what about individual colors? In case you guys aren't, uh, don't know this, um, any kind of display-based um, display based image like a TV, a monitor, your cell phone, um, any kind of video game, um, um, handheld video game, Anything like that is going to have um, an RGB output. So the colors are made of red, green, and blue pixels. So let's take a look. There are 256 shades of red, 256 shades of green, 256 shades of blue, and this all amounts to, um, in the end, uh, when combined together, it's going to be about 16 million colors that are possible in Photoshop. Now, just like we looked at our grayscale, and we saw that our grayscale was perfect. We have plenty of black. We have plenty of white. We have um, our mid grays are okay. They're not too bad. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do, and they're represented on this graph here. Each one of the um, colors is a spike on the graph. If we go to each individual channel, we're going to see how the reds are doing. And if you notice, we have an issue with the reds. We have certainly have uh, light, very light reds to white. We have mid reds, but our blacks or our dark reds are having a problem. Same thing with our greens. We're actually having an issue with both the lights and the dark greens. And blue, we're having an issue with the light blue. So we have plenty of dark blues. We have some of the mid blues, but we don't have any of the light blues. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reassign all the shades of, of all the colors. And to reassign, we're going to say, okay, at 255, there's actually nothing. There's no spike at 255. 254, 253 has nothing as well. So we're going to reassign this and say, okay, we're now going to make pure white on the blue spectrum begin at 235. And really this is all by eye. So you're just taking a look at your screen as you adjust. And it's not going to be perfect yet until you go through all three. So it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. This um, way of, sorry, this uh, levels uh, looks like kind of like a mountain. And what you want to do is you want to kind of approach the foot of the mountain on either side. So blue. And let's go on this side with green. And again, this is all just by your eye. So we're going to adjust all three first before we go back in and fine tune. We're looking pretty good, but I'm noticing as I go on here on the red channel, the dark reds and reassign, if I go too far, this turns a little too green for me. But I know that I can go in a little bit, 
go back, make some adjustments here, and again, this is all just by eye. Oh, I may need some lights as well. That's good. And my last one, my blue. And that looks pretty good. Now I can go back in and I can keep refining, keep refining. I can go back to the RGB channel. And if you notice, the RGB channel still looks pretty good. Push OK. And there you go. And there you have it. So I'm going to do it before and after. I'm going to hit Command Z, just Command Z, and hit Command Z again. So that's your before and after. And you're going to see that there is a huge difference between the two. Okay. So there's one. Um, the last thing I was going to say is there's just a few spots here and there that need to be fixed and for those few spots we're going to go back to the red eye reduction space and you have spot healing and the healing brush and you're just going to use either one of these they do different things they do actually they do exactly the same thing just in two different ways so the first thing i'm going to do if i hit spot healing it's just like the clone stamp tool although it just works slightly different so if i want to heal this portion here what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my brush. So I'm going to hit left bracket so it's just a little bit bigger than the object. Then I'm going to go somewhere that has something similar, just like the clone stamp tool. I'm going to go ahead and hold Alt. Take a picture of the area that I want to mimic here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and hit. Actually, that's the healing brush that does that. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. So it's the healing brush, making sure I have a soft brush. There we go. I go ahead and hold Alt. There we go. So just like the clone stamp tool, um, it's going to paint. But the difference between this tool and the clone stamp tool is where the clone stamp tool would simply just paint. This one's actually going to do two steps. It's going to paint and then blend. So once I click the image, so you can see it's going to paint this part of the hair on here. So go ahead and click. And like I said, it not only paints, but it blends the pixels around it to try to make it look a little bit better. Let's go ahead and do that one more time. Let's go ahead and find a piece to this image that's maybe needing a little bit of healing. There's not too many spots on this one. Okay, there we go. Now, be careful when you find a spot with an edge. Let's see if this is going to have what I do what I think it's going to do. So I'm going to go ahead now and hold Alt. I'm going to sample somewhere around. And I'm going to go ahead and take this here. And there it is. Anytime you get close to an edge, what's going to happen is it's going to pull that edge away. So this actually, something like this, close to an edge, would probably call for the clone stamp tool. Let's go ahead and sample with the clone stamp. And because it doesn't blend the edges and it simply just paints over it, you can see that this is most likely the better solution. And then finally, the last thing was the first thing I grabbed on accident was the spot healing tool. And spot healing tool does just that. So it just heals certain spots. And a lot of times um, I like to call this one the pimple tool because it just really is just a quick way to get rid of a certain spot. You don't have to sample, you just go ahead and get the spot healing tool and you just click. And it does it all on its own. Now with this one, uh, Photoshop is going to, Photoshop is just sampling the area directly around the pixels. So while the healing brush tool, I can actually tell Photoshop I wanted to sample this area. And it's going to sample that area and blend. The spot healing tool, we're really just putting all of our trust and faith in Photoshop to sample exactly what we want. And you can see that it actually does a pretty good job. And again, I'm approaching the hair here. So if I was to um, try to heal that, it might pull it with it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the clone stamp tool for that. And that's it. Go ahead, Command Zero. Will bring us back out to the entire picture. So we have a image that has been almost completely restored, looking pretty good. Um, there's a little fold here, but that can be actually taken care of with 
most likely either the clone stamp tool or one of the healing tools. Okay, that is your lesson for red eye reduction and levels adjustments and color correction. Good luck.